Hey everybody, happy Thursday. Now today's question comes from Twitter. Remember, I asked you all on Twitter to send in your Thursday questions, but before we jump into it, make sure you're subscribed. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I put out videos on Mondays and Thursdays, so make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on so you don't miss them. But let's jump into that question. Katie, how do you manage a traumatic event, for example, a school shooting, and be a good role model for children in the aftermath? i.e. talking to them, managing your own anxiety, and making kids feel safe. It seems to me that every month we're hearing about another shooting happening, and this has been going on for years and years, honestly, as far back as I can remember. So I know that many of our Kenyans and other community members are teachers, parents, and just people in general who are really struggling with how to best manage this. When talking to children specifically, the most important thing that we can do is allow for the conversation to be had. And I know that that can kind of go without saying, well, of course we're gonna talk about it, but what I mean is that we need to let them know it's okay to feel how they're feeling. We can even, even give examples of what we may be experiencing, such as anxiety, hypervigilance, you know, struggling to sleep. We can talk about all the different kind of sensations, feelings, bodily experiences we're having as a result to let them know that that's okay and then giving them time to express how they feel personally. Because children often don't know how to feel. They can feel embarrassed. They can be you know, confused about everything and allowing them the time they need to talk to us about it, to express all they're going through can make all the difference. But also I just wanna add, we don't wanna force it. If they're not ready to talk about it or they're just you know, pushing us off and pushing us off, give them the time to come to you. You can just keep checking in periodically to make sure they know you're there when they need you. And once they do reach out and once they do speak to you about all that they're going through, just validate it. Let them know it's okay. Tell them that you felt that way too. Share some of your own personal struggles and things that have changed for you and just let them know that everything that they're feeling is completely valid and okay. Because there's a lot of confusion during this time. When we have traumatic things go on or things happening in the news where maybe we're a younger child and we're just watching our parents watch the news and we don't really fully understand, a lot of what we may feel can be confusion and worry and concern that the future is not safe or going to school isn't safe or you know my mom seems really anxious and I don't know why. We need to validate all the things that could be going on as a result. And the next thing that we can do when it comes to helping children and helping manage what's going on is to lead by example. This means that we talk about how we're feeling that we do things to take care of ourselves, whether that means you know, going for walks, listening to music, we're talking with them about all the things we're doing to make sure that we're okay. If we need professional help, maybe we go see the counselor, we make an appointment with a therapist, and we openly discuss it. Because the more calm we are, the calmer the children around us will feel as well. And by sharing all that we're doing, we're encouraging them to get help as well, to take care of themselves. We can even offer up examples. You know, I did this, maybe tonight you go take a bubble bath, or maybe you spend time with that friend. Or hey, instead of you know talking about history for this class period, let's go around the room and share something that we're really grateful for. We can do a lot to encourage them to use the self-care tools that work for us. Another thing that we can do, especially if we're a teacher or we're in any kind of position where we're in charge of a, you know, a classroom or a group of children, is to put together a safety plan with them. And what I mean by that isn't when I talk about you know, suicide safety plans and things like that. It's more like, if something scary was to happen, what would we do? And writing it out on the board and putting it together, letting them add in the things that they would want added can help them feel more in control. Because something that we hear about children responding to school shootings or just things happening in the news that can be really frightening is that they feel unsafe. And we can help give them some more feelings of safety and control by putting together this plan. That way they feel empowered and more in control of what may be going on around them. Another thing we can do is to get back into our, you know, normal routine as quickly as possible. I know this is going to be different for different people depending on how your school has responded or how your work has, you know, made things change as a result of the shootings and all the things that are happening. But as soon as we can, even as a parent, the sooner we can get back into a regular routine, the better. Children feel safe and secure when it comes to having a routine, even adults. We work best knowing that things are predictable, especially when other things seem out of our control and scary. Having a routine that's predictable that we can count on can help us feel a little bit more at ease. And the final thing we can do to help children in our lives and people around us feel safe and secure after all the horrific things that are going on is to speak positively about the future. 
Make plans. Talk about what you're going to do this summer, what your vacation's going to be. Are you going to go to the Grand Canyon? Are you going to go to the beach? Are you going to go see family and friends? What is it? Talk about it. Make the plans. Set dates. Because often when we're in the midst of a crisis or an attack and we feel unsure of everything, children often report that they feel like the future is scary and uncertain and unsafe overall. It's kind of a bleak outlook. But if we give them something to hope and to look forward to, same as adults, if we have something to look forward to, it can give us hope. It can make us feel better. And so giving them the opportunity to plan with you, to get excited with you, can change their whole perspective and feeling right now. This video has been brought to you by the Kenyans on Patreon. If you would like to support the creation of these mental health videos, click the link in the description and check it out. I hope you found those tips helpful. I know a lot of us don't know how to talk to our children or the children in our classroom or whatever work we do, we don't know how to talk about it. And hopefully these tips help you get back on track and feel more in control. But as always, I can't mention or think of everything. So leave in the comments, what are things that you've done? Maybe with your children or your classroom, how have you talked to them and what has worked best? Let us know in those comments and I will see you next time. Bye.